It's Mike Can. Wanted to comment on medical marijuana. What you can do right now in Massachusetts to help medical patients is one thing that you can really do today to help patients going forward. And that's contact the governor of Massachusetts. I'm going to put the phone number up. You need to call them. You need to email. Contact the governor. Let them know that they're denying patients for medicine and it doesn't need to happen. We can stop this. You can stop it. You need to contact the governor. If you haven't contacted the governor, what are you waiting for? Especially if you consider yourself a medical marijuana activist. I hope MassCan puts out the word. We need to contact the governor on this. I know uh, some, some, some activists out there are planning a protest in a couple of weeks, weeks, which is great. MassCan normal's behind it, which is awesome. But in the meantime, we need to contact the governor. We're, we're running out of time. This governor's a lame duck. He's running for higher office, baby. If we don't make our voice heard this week, it's gonna be too late. Time is ticking. Every day that goes by, less likely this governor is going to do anything. And we know the next governor, Martha Coakley, the attorney general that we protested about a year ago, and Charlie Baker, they're both not going to help us. They're going to be even worse than the current governor we have right now. So we need to take action right now. You need to contact, you need to email the governor. If you care about medical patients in Massachusetts, now is the time. Ask him to lift the ratio on caregivers. Ask him to open the dispensaries as soon as possible. We need 50 of them. That's what Massachusetts Patient Advocacy Alliance is asking for. If you don't know about MPAA, look them up. Look at what they're asking for. And that's what you should be calling the governor and asking for, exactly what MPA put in the letter. You can look that up on uh, www.mikecan.net. I posted that letter from Matthew Allen of uh, Massachusetts Patients Adv Advocacy Alliance. Definitely read up on that. I also want to talk about this guy, uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, who had some very interesting quotes uh, in local news recently about this medical marijuana. It's funny that... Uh, the DPH got rid of some of the dispensary applicants for what they claimed were false statements, misleading statements, when the Secretary of Health and Human Services, John Polanowitz, uh, said that it's considered to be the gold standard of public safety to limit caregivers to one patient. Basically, sending patients like myself and others out there out into the streets to get cannabis, that's, public, that, that's the gold standard of public safety. To send patients to drug dealers? That's the gold standard of public safety? That's a false statement, Secretary of Human Health and, Sur Health and Human Services, Mr. Polanowitz. I, I would like you to answer to that. Why are you putting up false statements? It's clearly not true. Sending the patients to the black market is not the gold standard of medical marijuana for public safety for our city and towns. It's actually the worst way to do it. You're basically asking myself to either go to the black market or to grow my, grow for myself, which is, also comes with a great risk. Do we want more grows? Is that is that good for public safety? Because that's what you're advocating for. And you also said uh, that half the states that have caregivers only a limit to one. I looked it up. I couldn't, find, I couldn't verify that information. I think that was also a false statement. Since you, you're defending getting rid of these dispensary applicants that spend a lot of money to get vetted by your agency for the false statements. When you make the same, when you make two documented false statements, I'm gonna call those false statements because I think they're misleading. I think that they are false statements. I think you should lose your job. You, you get paid a lot of money and this is the best that you can do. You can come up with some false statements to uh, crush, crush people in wheelchairs, to crush people who need medicine. That's what you've done. You've, you've put out false statements. You're probably getting paid, I don't know, 150, 200 grand a year. You're a hack. You're a hack. You lied, and you don't hold yourself to the same standard that you want to hold these medical marijuana applicants to. What a joke. And the fact is, we've been calling the governor. I've been calling the governor. I've been calling the governor on WBZ radio. I've been calling him on a lot of radio stations. You could see some of that on YouTube. I've written them, I've emailed them, I've protested at the State House, I've gone to the State House, I've lobbied at the State House, we've protested at DPH. When, you know, remember that with the King of Pot when he was still alive? We protested at DPH, we protested Martha Coakley, and you know what? Not one of them have ever reached out. I've written how many articles? I know a lot of you folks read them. Dig Boston, Greenleaf Magazine, even Relief Magazine, you know, different, different outlets have been printing my stuff. And uh, Mass Can Normal and their Mass Grass, you know, I get printed everywhere in my writing. And not once, not once will they respond. I, I ask for, you know, responses from DPH, from the State House. 
not only as a medical patient will they not respond, as a journalist they won't respond. You know, I'm, I'm a print journalist, get printed every single week, and they don't even have the guts to respond to my request for quotes, for my requ request for statements on this. And they don't answer medical marijuana patients. They don't care. The governor of Massachusetts does not care about people in wheelchairs showing up at the state house. That's what's been expressed. If you're not upset about this, if you haven't called the state house, you're the problem. You need to call the state house. If you haven't done what a lot of us have done this week, which is call the governor, what are you waiting for? Call the governor, email the governor. People keep asking me, what can we do? That's what you can do. Email, call the governor. Don't wait three weeks to go by. Do it today and keep calling until you get an answer.